Hey y'all, I'm Kelly Bannon and we have brand new music from Eric Church and a massive triple album announcement from the chief himself. This is my conversation with Eric Church. Oh, who we got? Who we got back there? Oh, back there? Guitar wise, yeah. We just got guitars. Um, you know you know what's interesting? Um, Keith Urban sent me a 1933 Martin for Christmas. This Christmas? This Christmas. I came back and it was underneath the tree and I was blown away. He was thinking for, um, you know, the We We Were song that we had. Unbelievable. <laughs> that Un- is I- nuts. Free War Martin. It was unbelievable. And it, well, I mean, what a sweet guy. But Where did he I- find it? I mean, is this a groon or a, like... Where did he find this guitar? I have no idea. I have not got the full story. He says we got to talk about it at some point in time. I only, I mean, I, I texted him and thanked him and blown away. So um, it's, it's, I, I came back from Christmas underneath the tree and he had a letter with it. I mean, just, I was, I was, I was floored. I was totally floored. So that is nuts. And God, that man is a good gift giver. <laughs> Yes, nuts. he wins. Oh my gosh. Okay. Wow. Well, I'm going to move. I don't really want to move on from pre-war Martins, but we're going to move on yeah. because yeah. <laughs> you have some amazing news to share. And I want to hear it just like from the chief himself. You got it. So we we, we went to the mountains of North Carolina, Carolina, as everybody knows, and we, we recorded a lot of music. And that music will manifest itself um, in three albums. So there's there's two albums, um, Heart, Soul, and the middle album is, is called And. And that'll be for the, the fan club um, exclusively and only. So it'll be Heart and Soul. And it um, it's my favorite project we've ever done. The way it was recorded, <clears throat> it was um, a lot of fun. Uh, it was spiritual to me. And this was COVID. So you get a you get kind of a pre COVID look. Um, basically, we secluded ourselves. We went into quarantine before anybody else had to go into quarantine. But um, it's it's I'm excited about it. You know, getting out and, and and getting it out in the world. It's the biggest project that um, we we've ever done. Massive. I mean, so I know a little bit about the process and how it went down. But will you describe what was happening during those days and those nights in the mountains of North Carolina? So my idea was, and, and you know this, it's it's always interesting when you you have a group of songs that you've written and you say these are my you know 10 best or 20 best and everybody listens to them and they decide. So I feel like that by the time you get to the studio, those songs have been listened to and thought about and played and second guessed. It, it's, I mean, I don't want to use that. tired is the wrong word, but by the time you get there, um, it's just, I don't know, it's different. So for me, what I wanted to do was I wanted to write a song the same day we recorded that song and let creativity lead. And if it sucked, it sucked, <laughs> but let it, let it just be what it was going to be. And um, there's nothing like the birth of a song and you know that idea and, and there's nothing like that. You get the goosebumps and you sit there and God, it's good. And I think that I wanted to carry that directly into the studio. And that's what we tried to do. So every day I would get up um, or actually every night I would stay up most of the night writing songs and we finish them by two or three o'clock in the afternoon. And then we'd go in the studio and we'd record and it's just the most freeing. I don't know. I, I've never had anything creatively that uh, was that uh, just soul lifting. And um, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun to do. And it was it also for the songwriters that were with me, my co-writers, there's something about writing a song, you know, is going to be recorded that night. They dig in a little deeper. They, they, it's, it's real. It's very real. When did you know it could be three albums? We finished and we were listening back. And it was that kind of thing where you're, you know, the, the one of the best things about this, I forgot what we had done. I mean, when you when you write a song in the morning and you record the next day, you're writing a song. The number of times I went, what did we cut yesterday? What was the name of that? I mean, what, what was that? <laughs> so it's almost like you don't you have no clue what you're doing. You know, you get to the end 
and you go, what have, what have we done? And you start hearing it back. And that was when I thought, oh, sh- wow, there, there's, a, there's something. I didn't even know we did that. I forgot about that. And it was interesting. You know, you, we commit so much, or at least in my career, it's the first time, you know, that I, you commit so much to what the song is, what the, how the recording is. You spend hours with it, you know, mix it. Mm. Else. This was the first time that you do it, you record it, out. What's next? And you almost it, get to listen like a fan instead of like somebody who's driven around, listening to the demo, yeah. dr- driven around, listening to all the mixes, doing all the fixes. It's that's crazy to me. It's so yeah. it's also it scares the shit out of me. Yeah. It's inspiring. It's I love I love that you just threw the challenge down. And then this is what happened. Right. And, and, and it could have went bad. I mean, that, that was the thing that I got from the end of it is you take a chance. And I fully knew that we could get to the end of this and go, what's next? You know, let's trash it and try something. Else. I knew that. It was worth it. It was worth it. And, 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 it, and it, 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 it reaffirmed what I believe about music is when creativity is the lead. That's how you lead it. It works. It always works. And. If that's not leading, if you're trying to make a record that, you know, if if you sit down and go, hey, I want to make this kind of record, you got a problem. Because whatever, whatever the record you want to make needs to come in internally, not not something you're trying to make. When you sit down and go, I want to write this kind of song, you're screwed. So it's interesting to me because you've had like you seem to have your, you know, your pulse on or your finger on the pulse of you need a certain number of radio hit songs to have a career that looks a certain way. Yep. And you also have to feed that rabid fan that is the ch- the church fan that's very specific. Yeah. And demanding in some ways as far as like what they want. Like they want something special. Yeah. And those things are probably sometimes at odds. So if you look at our career, it's pretty easy to see our first single off of every album in our career has been aggressive, um, including this last one, Stick That in Your Country Song. That's aggressive. But the next one's normally a pretty big hit. So <laughs> you, you, you kind of know what this is kind of the you're pushing the envelope, knowing that there's only so far you're going to be able to push that envelope. You know, so going back to the Chief album, first single was Homeboy. You know, aggressive. Second, single, man. Outsiders. The first single was Outsiders, which was very aggressive. You know, and even even through you know, Mister Misunderstood. Mister Misunderstood was the first single, aggressive. You know, for radio. So it's about um, it's about being able to put that out. And I always leap that first because I know that's my best chance. You know, that's nobody's heard anything else. And, and that was what stick out with your country. They can't weigh in on anything either. It's like they don't get to pick. That's right. That's right. You're exactly right. So I get I get one chance to give them to, to, to frame the, to, to frame the argument. After that, it's gone. Once the record comes out, you know how this goes. They you know, they and I don't I'll always do that. I mean, um, the great thing about our career is um, it goes back to smoke a little smoke for me, which is on the Carolina album. And I remember, you know, Mike Dungan, and I remember being with Mike at, 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 a, at a meeting and things weren't going very well. I had done what they wanted to do. And we had released uh, Love Your Love the Most and Hell on the Heart. And both were radio hits and, and didn't matter to anybody in the world, including myself. So <laughs> um, we sat there and I said, hey, I'm out there every night. And Smoke a Little Smoke's tearing it up. I said, they're climbing the walls. And he goes, not going to happen. And I, I remember I remember going, hey, man, I really believe in this. And either, either we're going to put out Smoke a Little Smoke or I'm done. And um, to Mike's credit, he sat there. He had his gla- took his glasses off. I'll never forget this. And he threw the glasses at me across the table. <laughs> and he goes, it's your funeral. And it worked. And after that, Mike called me. 
And he goes, you know, okay, I, I get it. And from there, they've let me pick singles. They've let me have complete creative. So I was happy that we were able to prove in that and that that happened. So um, from there, I think we've been able to dictate a lot in our career that other artists don't get a chance to that they're listening to a panel or they're, they're trying, you know, you have your, the song you want, but that's not what's released. So the, 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 the real, the real benefit of a, of a Mike Dungan is he saw that I had a vision and then he let me do it. And, and that not, not every other person, actually, I would say no other person in town would let that happen. Well, this has been so fun. Um, will you will you tell me just before we go, how the hell does a Jasmine Sullivan uh, national anthem collaboration come up for the Super Bowl? Are y'all buddies? No, I've not met her yet. I mean, I'll only let me tell you something. She may be the best singer I've. <laughs> I am. I I was I was floored. And and you know what? The best thing about this, no matter what happens, because that's a that's a nervy thing that we got to do. But um, what a fa- I'm a fan. I- I've went in and listened to everything she did. And I had heard her name, but full disclosure, I, I-, I had not listened. This new album. Oh, my. The acuity of her runs is nuts. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I mean, it- and then so. And then Adam Blackstone is, is a guy who, um, a great producer, worked with The Roots, um, works with Justin Timberlake right now. He was the guy that set the track up and, and said, hey, you know, these are the two guys I want. And it was really credit to him to come in and go, I want this guy and I want this girl. And um, I, here's what I said. I've said this forever. I will never, ever sing the national anthem. <laughs> it's the worst. It's so funny. Lord. It's so hard, except the Super Bowl. And yeah, I, do I it. fully assumed, I mean, I'm not Chris Stapleton. I fully assumed they're never going to ask me. <laughs> so you know, this is the first, when they ask, I thought, Shh. you know, and then I got to do it now. My, fir- my first response was, I, no, there's no, I can't, I'm a stylist, not a vocalist. I may not agree, but I'm, I'll let you have it. But I, when I heard it, I thought, that's, that's cool. That sounds like me. And then I heard her. And I'm not missing a chance to sing with her. And that was it. It was it was once I heard her voice, I said, Okay, I'm in. 